Sorry, did I say um, Beautiful Soup was my favourite Python library? <laughs> That's because I haven't talked about it. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous is my favourite Python library. Um, I have so many requests. Beautiful Soup is dangerous. It's dangerous, really is. It's dangerous is by the Pirates Project, who make things like Flask, I believe. Um, but but they're, what they do is they're making one mega mega thing which has all these libraries built into it. They build lots of little libraries which are really cool. It's dangerous. One of my favourite because it's super simple. Um, so import uh, or rather from from it's dangerous import um, dot. I don't know how to use this serializer. Import serializer. Okay. What you need is a secret. So we're just going to put in here secret uh, secret equals hello. I'm uh, secret. Okay. You would usually put that in your settings. So if you're making a web app, you put that in settings. What it's dangerous to go do is it signs things, and then it can validate that it's signed. And it has a couple of extra features as well. So you can then make a serializer equals serializer uh, secret. And then what you would do then is you would make x equals dumps hello world like this. Oh, sorry. This should be an S. It, that's my serializer. That's my serializer. S dot dumps hello world. Right. That is what it looks like. If you notice here, it's got these in quotes because not because the quotes are there, but because it's got deserialize it. It knows it's a string and not an integer. If I dumped a number, it wouldn't have quotes, so it can deserialize that nicely. The second thing is it's got this full stop and some letters. That is the signature which is which it's decided to use. You can customize this to use specific formulas or specific algorithms. Um, out of the box is pretty cool. So what I can now do is I can put that in a cookie, send it to a browser, or I can put it in a token and put it on a mobile app and then get it back later and know it was one that I put there because only I know the secret. You never send your secret outside your system. So I can put it onto a tweet, I can do something else, and it's signed as being from me. So what I can do now is y equals s dot loads uh, that, and, and y is the original value. But let's say I wanted to edit it, just to demonstrate this. If I now do um, mod did x equals, I'm going to do uh, fix that capital letter. So I'm going to do capital letter uh, this um, plus uh, um, x uh, like that. You see there, I managed to fix that capital. It was a lowercase. I did the lowercase on purpose. You've got to trust me, I did. Um, uh, it's now a capital. And what I can now do, if I now try to load that, it will... Um, sorry. Yeah. If I try to load the modded one, it will now throw me an exception saying bad signature. So I can now catch that and go, hey, someone's trying to tamper with the data I've stored. Uh, the reason this is so cool is that if you've got a web server, instead of you storing a session ID, then putting that session ID or the session data into a, into a database, which you have to do a database hit to pull it out, then you still don't know someone's just changed their session ID. You could use a UID, I guess. This allows you to store the session data actually in a cookie so it's available on every request without doing an expensive database query. Checking a signature is faster than doing database queries. So this library, it's super tight. It's super nice. There is actually, if you want to put the stuff in a URL for some reason, there is another serializer, um, and that is the URL safe serializer. And the thing basically works the same way. So I do s equals URL safe serializer um, secret. And obviously this will produce me um, different, different output but that will always be safe to put in a URL. So you can stick that in a get parameter or something like that. Very handy, again, if you're doing something OAuth where you're sending someone off and you're getting a value back, or if you're sending off someone off to a payment scheme, you're getting a value back saying, no, this is the request or the returning user from the request I sent out in the first place. So I don't like putting stuff in URLs generally because things in middleware and proxies and things and get them out of logs, uh, but they're good if they're one time only. Uh, it's dangerous is actually very, very cool. You can do more things than that. Uh, you can do timed uh, signing with timestamps. So have a look through here. So basically with this, you would put a, a timestamp sign and you'd sign it with a max A. When you unsign, you say, how long ago was it? So you can actually say, yes, it, it, this, uh, this token only works for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, at the signing point, rather than have to embed that data in your data as well. 
So that's it. That is the third library. If you're enjoying these, please hit like, please subscribe. I won't ask you to put your favourite library down because I'm sure you all went to yesterday's video and put your favourite library in yesterday's video. Um, but thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all again tomorrow for library number four, which I guarantee will not be my favourite Python library ever.